Welcome to the Science of Effective Scene Lighting. I'm your host, Sam Massa. With LED scene lighting, one of the most important influencers of how the circuit's gonna perform over the life of the apparatus is the temperature of the circuit. Every LED is rated by a chip manufacturer to produce a certain amount of light. This rating can be found on the data sheet for the LED. But what a lot of people don't realize is that that bin code and that rating is based on a certain temperature. And the temperature is the junction between the back of the LED and the substrate of the circuit board where it's attached. So if you meet that temperature, which is typically 85 degrees Celsius, then you can effectively achieve that much light output. So if you look at some fixtures in the fire truck industry and you measure the temperature just with an IR barbecue heat gun, you'll see the temperature of the housing can sometimes be as close to 100 or 110 degrees C. What you can deduce from that is that the junction temperature where the LED touches the circuit board is even higher than that. And if the chip is advertised to produce a certain number of lumens at 85 C and we're 30% higher in temperature, then you may in fact be 30% less in light output. Every LED fixture has to dissipate heat somehow, and there's two types of thermal management that can be used to get rid of that heat. You either have passive thermal management, which is airflow across a heat sink on the housing to dissipate the heat in the atmosphere, or you have active thermal management, which backs off the drivers of the LED and prevents them from getting as hot because they're drawing less power. When we explore scene light fixtures housings, it's important to understand the effect of the temperature and the ability of that housing to dissipate heat. So if you have a very thin fixture with a lot of power being pumped through it, the junction temperature where the LED touches the circuit board is gonna be a lot higher, and therefore the light output will reduce a lot faster as you max out the ability of that fixture to dissipate the heat. The inverse is also true if you have a very large heat sink or a very effective heat sink, and you have a very little bit of power being pushed through it, then you can maintain that light output a lot longer because you never get the junction temperature very hot. Let's look at two examples. The first fixture we're looking at, this is gonna be a graph of the light output degrading over an hour and the temperature increasing over an hour. Now this fixture is pretty well designed to where you don't really lose much light output over the first hour of operation. And what you're looking at on the top of the screen, this is gonna be the light output graph and the bottom of the screen is the temperature. So as you'll see, it's a very gradual increase in temperature and it's a very gradual decrease in light output. If you look at this fixture, this is the inverse. This is a very thin heat sink with a very powerful circuit board. If you look at this point right here where the arrow is pointing, what happens is the light output is degrading to a certain point where then the temperature has increased to where the drivers now recognize, okay, we have a problem. So they start actively backing off the forward current to the LEDs. And of course, then we see an active reduction in light output because of that reduction in forward current. So what you'll see is almost 40% reduction in light output over the first hour of operation. And if you look here at the bottom, this is gonna show a junction temperature well in excess of what the chip manufacturer rates those LEDs to produce. Now, we can't speak for other manufacturers in the fire space, but we know that with our products, we would never want the LED itself operating at a temperature greater than the chip manufacturer recommends, and therefore this fixture would no longer be compliant if it was in one of our bench tests. The next piece of thermal management that's important to understand is that the chips themselves are rated to operate at a certain temperature, but so are all of the other components in the LED circuit. So when you look at a scene light, if it doesn't come on, most people would think, oh, the LEDs are burned out, but there's so many components that support the operation of the LED. We like to think of the circuit as the general and the army. The general is the LED. It gets all the credit for the job being done correctly, but the army of all the other components, resistors, inductors, capacitors, all the little pieces that are on the circuit board all have to operate at the same temperature and the same efficiency as the LED, or else the whole thing comes crumbling down. So if you look at manufacturing an LED scene light, it's really important that you're picking a fixture where all of the components on the circuit board are ready to handle the temperature that the LEDs produce. You can save a few pennies by using lower quality components, but when you look at all of the other components, even 10 cent resistors, it's really important that they're all balanced and all designed to be up to the same operation. If the Army's weakest link fails, then the general doesn't get any credit when you're replacing a $2,000 scene light because of a 10 cent resistor. 